Should a drone be the next thing you add to your fishing electronics? The cost of consumer drones has come down so much and they're so easy to fly now. Just about anybody can afford them or fly them. In this video, I'm going to answer the question for you. Is a drone a useful tool to add to your fishing electronics? My name is Lauren and I've been in the marine electronics industry for the last 22 years. In that time, I've gained a lot of knowledge on the different products and the focus of this channel is to share that knowledge with you. So if you like what you see, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna answer the questions for you. What can you do with the drone? What are the limitations of the drone? And then what are the best conditions to use a drone in? I'll also have some tips for you along the way on how to use your drone. So let's get right into it. What can you do with a drone? Probably one of the most obvious times you'll benefit from using a drone is during the spawn because the fish are shallow and easy to spot. Seeing individual fish guarding their nests or determining what stage of the spawn the fish are in are a couple examples of how you can quickly cover a large area of water with a drone to locate fish. Whether it's bass or bluegill, the drone can help you spot those nests and fish cruising in spawning areas. Another great use for a drone is checking out spots between trips. Checking out new spots to fish during the week after work or on your lunch hour can help you maximize your time on the water during the weekend when you're fishing. You can do a lot of the scouting work with the drone, which is often quicker than idling through a weed choked back bay and then having to idle out again. You can basically use it to cover water in the shallows the same way you would use side scan to cover a large area in deeper water. We can fly over this weed choke bay to find anything out of the ordinary that might hold a fish. If you have a limited amount of time to fish each week, a drone can be a great time saver for you. Another way a drone can be a time saver for a shallow water fisherman is you can actually fly that drone up the back of a creek to see if the cover you're looking for is in there. You can visually check to see if it's worth spending the time to get in there or not. In this case, we're looking for overhanging trees and we found an obvious one here. And just up the creek, there looks like there's a few more. In this case, it would be worth the time to idle up the creek because it has what we're looking for. We've all used Google Earth to try and find that spot on a spot, but a lot of the times those images are relatively low resolution and some might even be outdated. The drone can now give you that same aerial view, but with live images of the spot at up to 4K resolutions. This will help you understand how the structure lays out better than Google Earth, and you may also be able to see fish on the structure. In this case, we have a major point extending into a bay. Scanning it with the drone can quickly tip us off to any cover that is on the structure that we should hit while we're fishing the spot. If you think you've got a pattern going and want to start running that pattern on the lake, you can send the drone up quickly to scan a shoreline to see if it has what you're looking for to fish out that pattern. In this case, we were looking for a shoreline with docks. Every shoreline on this lake is covered in boat docks, but we figured out the key was lead-in cover to the docks in water just offshore. We can clearly see that we have that here with these cribs out in front of the docks. If you think you've seen enough already, take a look at the links in the description where you can learn more about the different drones that are out there and purchase the products. But we still have a lot more to cover in this video, like talking about the limitations of the drone. Most drones have a short flight time because they don't get great battery life. In my case, I get about 30 minutes of flight time, so it's really important to carry extra batteries and a way to charge them throughout the day. When I bought my drone, I bought the Fly More package. That included a battery charger and two extra batteries, so I can get about an hour and a half of flight time while I'm on the water. It's also a good idea to have a way to charge the drone in your boat or truck. When you are looking at a small display on the water, it's hard to see smaller targets like fish, for example. 
but when you review the video on a bigger monitor, it makes it so much easier. You can also view it at its full resolution rather than the 720p that is streamed to the display while flying. This can also be frustrating though if there's something just on the edge of your screen that you didn't see while you're out flying that you think would be worth checking out. One of the main reasons I chose to get the mini drone is because it's under 250 grams. And in my area, that makes it legal to fly without a full license. Another limitation is the maximum flight altitude of 400 feet. Most of the shots in this video were all shot well under the altitude of 200 feet. So you are able to accomplish what you need despite that 400 foot restriction. You do have to make sure that you abide by local laws while you're flying your drone. And these laws are getting more and more restrictive on drones. There's three conditions that need to be met in order to make using a drone effective for this perfect. First, you need sun. Second, no wind. And third, clear water. If you're missing any of these things, you can still use the drone and it will help you, but the effectiveness goes down. Bright sunny days when there are no clouds in the sky are best because clouds can create shadows that make it harder to see. Or you just have to wait until the clouds pass to view an area which can take up time and battery life. Lakes that have clear water and lighter colored bottoms are best, but you can still see well in clear water with darker bottoms. The best time of day to use a drone is when the sun has been up for an hour or two until about two hours before sunset. In most cases, it's best in water shallower than 10 feet. If sun and wind conditions are perfect, you can still use it effectively in deeper water. Natural lakes in the northern US and Canada are prime places to use a drone, especially in the Great Lakes region. Highland reservoirs in the central states, clear lakes in reservoirs in Arizona and California are all examples of where you will benefit from having a drone. Of course, as you travel, you'll have to investigate local laws and restrictions in those areas to ensure you fly the drone legally. Here are a few examples under different conditions of using the drone in clear water and what it'll look like. Just like it's easier to sight fish on a sunny day, it's easier for the drone's camera to see into the water on a sunny day versus a cloudy day. Here's an example of a cloudy day with a 10 mile an hour wind and no sun. Water depth here ranges from five to 10 feet. Even with the wind, we still have good visibility. So if we came back on a calm day, this would be a spot to check out in more detail. When you have wind, it usually just takes some more time as you have to focus on the objects a little bit more as the wave action on the surface is distorting them. I find minimal movements with the drone are best on days when you have some chop. Tea-stained water is something we run into in the north where I live quite often. It's still relatively clear though and has good visibility on sunny days. In this case, we've got a cloudy, windy day with tea-stained water. Typically, when faced with these conditions, you have to fly at lower altitudes to see well into the water. I found with this color water, it's also very easy to miss objects you might want to focus on because it's harder to see them. When I reviewed this video at home, I found these logs that I certainly would have liked to check out in more detail when I was on the water. I wanna give you a few tips now on flying the drone. The first thing is not to get too close to the water. There's sensors on the bottom of the drone that assist with landing. When you have water that's a moving surface and a reflective surface, a lot of the times they can't judge the altitude you're flying at correctly. I personally don't like going below 20 feet if I don't have to, or I like to try and maintain visual contact with the drone at all times. Another tip I can give you to get your drone out there really quick is on the controller we have different modes. So sport mode will actually allow the drone to fly a lot quicker. When you wanna get out over a spot, that's when I'll use sport mode. When I find something with the drone that I wanna hover over and look at in more detail, I'll switch it from sport mode to cine mode. This will slow the reaction time on all the controls of the drone. A lot of the less expensive drones require you to use a smartphone as your display. My recommendation is to find one that you can see really well in the direct sunlight. Otherwise, you'll have to shade it and squint and you'll miss a lot of objects. We've talked about the importance of reviewing at home and the limitations of the screen is one of those reasons. But don't forget to hit the record button while you're out flying so you can review at home. A lot of the times I've forgot to do that and I lose out on that footage. What is the best altitude to fly the drone at? I would say anywhere from about 150 to 200 feet when you're scanning an area. If you wanna hover over an object and get a better look, you can lower the drone anywhere from about 20 to 70 feet. So how easy is it to fly one of these things? Let me show you some of the basic controls. So the first thing you have to do is take off. Simply press this arrow on the left, and then you can press and hold take off, and the drone will start. The left joystick control will control the drone looking left and right and then moving up and down. 
So we can increase altitude by pushing it up and then decrease altitude by pulling it down. You can then turn to the left and turn to the right. The right joystick will then control the movement of the drone forward, back, left, and right. So we can move the drone forward. The drone can then pan to the right, pan to the left, and then move the drone backwards. You can also combine controls at the same time. So we can raise the drone in altitude and move it to the right at the same time. So now we're flying at about 130 feet, panning over this reed bed. At the top of the controller, we have this knob, which will allow us to adjust the camera angle. So we can look down into the water, which is probably what you want to do most of the time. So those are some of the basic controls. Let's bring the drone back here so I can show you how to land it. I find it much easier to look at the drone itself rather than the screen when you're landing. Once the drone is hovering over the area you want, you can then start to bring it down. The sensors will automatically bring that drone down. After using a drone for the purpose of locating fish and structure over the last several months, I personally see a lot of value to having this in your arsenal, especially in shallow water. I'm sure you can think of even more uses than I've outlined in this video for using a drone as a tool to finding fish and structure. I hope I've opened your eyes to using a drone and how valuable a tool it could be for you to add to your fishing electronics. Let me know in the comments if you think you would add a drone after watching this video. Heck, at under $500, it'll probably be the cheapest thing you have in your fishing electronics package. So we've got side imaging, live scope, Mega 360. Now we're using a drone to find fish. What's gonna be next?